So tonight, Blue Hat, in our 22nd year, has decided to present a dramatised adaptation of the story by Charles Dickin, Dickens that captures the triumph of human nature over the power of greed. And the line that said to Scrooge, you know the price of everything but the value of nothing is the moral compass by which he is guided back to the real meaning of Christmas. And we hope you enjoy making this journey with us. Just to talk about the cast, you know, they say there's a cast of thousands. There literally is the whole parish and at least three neighbouring parishes are on stage here tonight. And it's wonderful. And I know when they were looking for somebody to play the part of Scrooge, they were looking for somebody that would be kind of similar to the personality. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Sean Keller was tied into another production at that particular moment in time. But in all fairness to Brendan, uh, Ryan has stepped up. And uh, I'm also delighted to see um, young, uh, tiny Tim, Tim Cratchit is played by Petey Sheen, who's been a rodeo uh, for Blue Hat for years, and it's great to see him front of house. There's amazing actors here tonight, and it's a beautiful story, and it's the first time Blue Hat have put on a Christmas production, and we're delighted to have you here to share it with us. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, enjoy and get into Christmas by ear to ear. Get 
Netflix, £10, 8 shillings and 3 farthings. Yes, yes, what is it? If you please, sir. Well? I just came in to ask you... No, you can't. Can't what, sir? You can't have any more call for the fire. Do you think I made a call? <laughs> no, sir, but that wasn't what Mr. I... Mr. Pratchett, have you considered the monstrous price these scoundrels are charging for a mere hundred weight of coal? Eh? Ruinous, I tell you. Ruinous. We'll all be in the poorhouse if we don't take care, Pratchett. All of us. Yes, sir, but that's not... Not another one now, Pratchett, or I'll be obliged to find <laughs> myself another clerk. Eh? God bless my son, for it was a Christmas Eve. I had have you all off my premises for good. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, sorry, sir. <laughs> sorry, sir. Eh? Eh, the sorry pay for the giddy you burn away in there every week, eh? I, I think I've been too kind to you, Cratchit. Too kind. What have you got there? It's the weekly account, sir. Well, let me see it. Mr. Cratchit, what's this? Uh, what's what, sir? Mr. Cratchit, when you came to me, you assured me with every appearance of honesty that you are familiar with the principles of arithmetic. I am, sir. Well, pray, I have the following. One pound, four shillings, and two pence and a half penny, plus <coughs> eighteen shillings and eight pence. Uh, that's a... Uh, two pounds, uh, one shilling and ten pence half for me, sir. Oh, my congratulations, Mr. Cratchit. Thank you, sir. Then why is the same amount entered in this book as two pounds, one shilling and ten pence? Oh, Where's sorry. the missing half, Minnie? <laughs> I'm very sorry, sir. I must have made a mistake. A very gravest one, Cratchit. Huh? Uh, uh, I always assume that you, 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 your, your bookkeeping was fairly satisfactory, well... Kind of satisfactory. Mr. Marley was kind enough to say that my books were the finest he'd ever seen, sir. Mr. Marley's date has been for seven years. <coughs> yes, sir, but when he uh, was... Does Mr. Marley pay your wages? No, sir. Uh, who does? You do, sir. Uh, then never mind Mr. Marley and his high opinion of you. What explanation have you for this? Well, it wouldn't have happened at any other time, sir. It's just that I wanted to finish the accounts early tonight and go home. Oh, and which night of our nights, pray? Why, oh, it's Christmas Eve, sir. I'm aware of that. Well, my wife and children were hoping that I could finish early and go home. Your wife and children are no concern of mine. Do I have a wife? No, sir. Well, no, am sir. I a wife? No, sir. Yeah, and I have my children? No, sir. <laughs> and do I want to go home? Well, you are home, sir. You live here. That's the side of my Now, it seems that, that you have no plausible explanation for this unparalleled error in, in, in arithmetic. You will be kind enough to take this book and do a fresh account. Tonight. Uh, tonight, sir? Tonight, Mr. Cratchit. Uh, and we'll have no more missing happenings, or you will be spending more time with your wife and family than you will find profitable. Now, get back to work. Yes, sir. Damn it, old sinner. What? Uh, I said thank goodness for a cold dinner, sir. A Merry Christmas, Uncle! God yeah. save you! Damn you! Never could you see I was drinking! Oh, so you were. Celebrating the festive occasion, eh? I'll join you. No! No! Sorry, what? Not enough? <sighs> yes, I would like a little more, thank you. To Christmas, Uncle! That shabby cost me a great deal of money! Oh, it was worth it. Well, uh, good to see you looking so well and happy, Uncle. It's awfully festive Christmas Eve, I suppose. Bah, homework! Christmas at Humboldt? You don't even mean that, sure. I do. Uh, Merry Christmas, indeed. Uh, 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 what right of you to be merry? You're poor enough. <laughs> What's money? <laughs> What's money, he says, sir? Uh? What's money? Oh, come on, Uncle. What right of you to be so dismal? You're rich enough. Bah! Now, don't be cross, Uncle. I will be cross, sir. Uh? What other way would I be when I live in a world of fools such as this? Uh? Uh, what right of you to be, to, to be merry? Uh? Uh, uh, what Christmas do you only uh, uh, time to pay bills? And get pressed. Uh, and find yourself a year older uh, and not an hour richer. But much wiser and happier. Uh, if I had my way, every idiot that goes around with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled in his own pudding uh, uh, and buried with a stake of holly to his hat. But, uncle. But, nephew, 
You keep Christmas in your way, and I keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Well, it's the better. Huh? What good is it ever done you? What profit is in it? Oh, if you mean money, none. But most of the good things I've had in my life have given me no profit. Christmas included. But I've always thought of Christmas as a good time. A kind, charitable, forgiving sort of time. The only time I know of in the whole of the year where men and women seem to open up their heart freely and without condition. Yes, to think of those below them. Not as if they were a race apart, but fellow passengers bound on another journey. <coughs> oh yes, you're quite right, Uncle. Christmas has never put gold or silver in my pocket. But it's done me good before, and it'll do me good again. And I say, God bless it. God bless it. You don't know what fun you'll catch it, and you'll lose your situation. Get back to work. Yes, sir. What do you want? Uh, there are two gentlemen here to see you, sir. Oh, 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 oh business gentlemen? I don't think so, sir. They were very civil. <laughs> uh, well, tell them I'll see them in a minute. Yes, sir. How are you, Captain? Ah, I'm good, sir. Thank you. Good, good. And your wife and your family? All oh, fine, too, sir. Thank you. Good. Um, I've been meaning to get that boy of yours a present, but I didn't seem to find the time. Uh, no, sir. You're fine. Uh, no offence, but we do well enough. Thank you, sir. Oh, very well. Okay. Uh, well, uh, a Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs> Merry Christmas! If I hear those words mentioned again in here, I'll open my offices tomorrow to make up for this waste of time. Now get back to work, Cratchit. Yes, sir. Very good. <laughs> You're free enough with your money, I see. Eh? For a man who has a penny piece. Now, don't be angry, Uncle. <laughs> I tell you what. Come on and have dinner with us tomorrow night. <coughs> I, uh, uh... I got to the devil. All in good time, Uncle. I tell you what. Just come around for uh, a glass of wine and a biscuit. And my wife and... Hey, your wife. Eh? Eh? Am I dreaming of that into that? Why? Because I fell in love. I fell in love. What a reason. <laughs> Good afternoon. Now, Uncle, you never came to see me before I got married. Why are you giving a reason not to come and see me now? Good afternoon. Uncle, I want nothing from you. I ask nothing. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. Well, I'm sorry to find you so unreasonable, but only because it's Christmas and you're not going to make me lose my temper. So, a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. Do you wish to see those two gentlemen now, sir? Oh, yes, send them in. Oh no, wait a minute. Mine. Mr. Marley, I believe. Uh, Have I the pleasure of addressing uh, Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Uh, Mr. Marley's day uh, has been seven years. <laughs> I see. Very sad. Uh, that's him there. <laughs> Dead as a doornail. <laughs> well, I'm sure that his liberality will be well represented by his surviving partner. Uh, oh, my credentials. And mine, sir. May we be seated, sir? No. <laughs> well? Well, well. Each year we consider it an honour to make the rounds of such gentlemen as yourself in the... In the sure knowledge that our journey will not be in vain. Today we visited Poulterbury and Squid. Anderson, Henderson, Sanderson and Richardson. And some. Tompkins and Lovelace. Smith, Smith, Smith and Smith. Yeah, Mr. Smith was most <laughs> generous. <laughs> uh, so I see... Um, you're collecting for charity. <laughs> well, one might push it like that. Yes, one might. Uh, and what did these gentlemen find um, uh, an adequate answer to your um, <coughs> importunities? Uh, I have the list here. It will be published, of course, so that 
No harm in your seeing us. No, sir. no, none at all. <laughs> Mr. Tompkins had no change. And <laughs> 14 children. Oh, oh, uh, uh, under all a very uh, profitable excursion, if I may say so. Yeah, you may, Mr. Scrooge, you uh, may. <laughs> especially when um, money is so hard come by these days. Huh? Uh, business is not good, gentlemen. Huh? Uh, in fact, I go further. Uh, business is bad, uh, very bad. Quite, sir. Uh, but we thought, uh, well, several of the gentlemen that we have already visited uh, mentioned that you have had a good year. A uh, particularly good year. Well, they were mistaken. Uh, I'd be lucky to see a uh, penny's profit. Uh, bills have to be paid, gentlemen. Uh, there's no denying them. Mr. Scrooge, I feel impelled to point out that no matter however bad a year you may or may not have had, uh, there are others who have fared worse. At this season of the year, it's most desirable that we make some provision for the poor and destitute. Yes. Many thousands of without the bare necessities. Hundreds of thousands of without the smallest of common comforts. Are there no prisons? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of prisons. Oh, oh. And the, um, <coughs> the poor house, uh, is it still in operation? It is. I wish you were not. And the, um, the, 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 the poor laws and the treadmills, uh, are they still working, I hope? <laughs> Both very busy, sir. Oh! Oh, I was afraid by what you said something had happened to stop them. I am relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Scrooge, if you were endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor meat and drink and a means of warmth for this Christmas. Yeah, we choose this time of the year because on the one hand it is a time when want is keenly felt and on the other a time when good things are in abundance. Oh. Now, sir, what shall we put you down for? Nothing. You wish to remain anonymous? I wish to be left alone. I don't make any extra money at Christmas and I can't afford to give it to idle people. Those who are badly off must go to the workhouse or the prisons. Many can't go there. But many would rather die first. Then let them die. <gasps> and increase the surplus population. It's none of my business. Charity is everyone's <sighs> business. Uh, humbug, Mr. Scrooge, I must protest. Come, sir. I'm afraid we can hope for nothing here. I hope, Mr. Scrooge, you never find yourself dependent on the charity of others. You would not find it pleasant, sir. I have no more to say to you, gentlemen. You are the first person to refuse me charity today. You are to be congratulated. Uh, Christmas! Take the horses, Is better than no one, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's all about you, old Marley, huh? 
Barely. Dead as a doornail. <laughs> Kendall's cost money. <laughs> <laughs> your partner, Jacob Marley. Oh! Was that right, John? So Jacob Marley? I was Jacob Marley. I see you don't believe in me. I don't. What proof of my reality would you have beyond that of your own senses? The least little thing can upset them. Uh, a, a bit of a undercooked, uh, uh, undigested beef, or a, a blab of mustard, or a, or a crumb of cheese, or a, 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 a bit of uh, undigested potato, sir. Sure. I could see anything. There's more gravy than grave about you, or whatever you are. <laughs> you were never one for making jokes, Ebenezer. You're laughing now because you're frightened. Uh, not. You're almost paralysed with terror. No. You're do, do, do you see this toothpick? I do. You're not looking at it. Nevertheless, I see it. Well, if I swallow this, I'd see things twice as horrible as you and in ten minutes. Uh, uh, humbug, I say. Uh, humbug. Ah! No, 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 please, please. Do you believe in me now? Yes, yes, I must, yes. But, but, but what do you want with me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should travel far and wide amongst his fellow men. If that spirit does not go forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death, to wander abroad through the world, witnessing what it cannot share, but what it might have shared, and turn to happiness whilst it was alive. Why do you wear those horrible chains? I wear oh, the did, cha you, did you commit some horrible crime on that? I wear the chains that I forged for myself in life. Yourself? Yes. Link by link, yard by yard, I made it. Of my own free will, I put it on. Of my own free will, I wear it. Is not the pattern familiar to you? No. Then it should be. At this moment, at every moment of the life behind you, you have been forging such a chain for yourself. But sure, I've done nothing. You have done much. Seven years ago, your chain was as long and as heavy as this. Not one minute of the day has passed since then, but you have added to that horrible burden you must drag through life after death. Yours is a ponderous chain, Ebenezer. Oh, you can't see it, but it's there, Scrooge. It's there. Oh, Jacob, Jacob, help me, help me. Oh, give me some comfort. I have none to give. Oh, you have to help me. You are my partner, Jacob. You like me. Please tell me what to do. Tell me, tell me. I cannot. Me. My time is nearly done. I cannot rest nor stay. Yet, not this. My spirit never walks beyond these four walls. Never goes beyond the limits of this money-changing hole. Many a time I've sat invisible beside you in that very chair. Have you indeed? Well, you've been a bit slow about it, Jacob, haven't you? Slow? Uh, seven years dead and still travelling? No rest. No peace. Only the incessant torture of remorse. Listen, Ebenezer. Listen before it's too late. Live, if you will, for a hundred years. You will not find the time to do all the good that lies within your power. Will you end your days regretting the last opportunities? Better in the knowledge of those wasted years? Will you do as I did? You! But you, you were always a good businessman, Jacob. Charity, mercy, forbearance. They should have been my business. I should have turned to mankind 
but instead I walked through the crowds of my fellow men with my eyes turned away. They were blind to the blessed star which led the wise men to a poor stable. My time is nearly done. Well, then, then say what you say uh, and go. I came to warn you, Ebenezer. Warn me? Yes. There is still a chance you might escape my fate. Oh, there is? A very small one. And if you do escape, it'll only be by my doing. Oh, thank you, Jacob, thank you. You're always a good friend to me. Ebenezer, you will be... Yes. Haunted. Oh. Haunted by three spirits. Is, is that the chance you mentioned, Jacob? It is. Well, I think I'd rather not have it. You must have it. Without their help, you cannot hope to avoid the path I tread. Expect the first one tomorrow night when the bell calls one. But you could not take them all together and get it over Expect with. Expect the second on the second night at the same hour and the third on the last night at the last stroke of midnight. Goodbye, Ebenezer. You'll never see me again. And for your own sake, remember. Remember what has passed between us. Remember. 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 Oh, fuck. What do you after two? Oh, it's so cold and dark. Is it possible that I could have slept through a whole day and into another night? That clock must be wrong. Because the next one must have gone into the works. Maybe I dreamt it. What did Mary say? Except, expect the first spirit at one. Quarter past twelve. Half past twelve. Hush, the county. Quarter to one. Oh. And you, the spirit whose coming was foretold? I am. But who are you and what do you want with me? I am the spirit of Christmas past. Long past? No. Your past, Ebenezer Scrooge. But what do you want with me? I believe, according to my records, your welfare is my concern. <laughs> well, I'm much obliged to your concern, but uh, 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 I think uh, a good night's sleep would be more uh, conducive to, uh, to a disturbance at this hour of the night. Mm. Let me see. There is something here about reclamation. Huh? Dear, dear, doesn't sound good. Better take heed. Rise, walk with me. Oh, but sure, I'm only a mere mortal. I can't go out in the cold. And actually, 
<coughs> I have a bit of cold at the moment. <laughs> Perhaps we could postpone our walk. Come. But shall I only in my night shot? <laughs> and, and, and where would you be taking me? You will see and understand. <coughs> Bear but a touch on my hand, and you shall be carried to the door. <laughs> Opinion, your fees are overdue six months. You can tell that drunk of a father of yours that the bill will be forwarded to the debt collectors if I don't have recompense within the month. This is not a charitable institution for the likes of you and your kind, slackers and miscreants. This is a respectable institution. I had your father pegged from the start, even if he did pull the wool over my husband's eyes. Now pack up your box and try to remember with a little bit of gratitude some of the very valuable lessons we've attempted to still in your head these last two years. My sister, a delicate creature whom a breath could have withered. But she had a large heart. Uh, yes, yes, she did. She died in childbirth, I think, but a child survived. Child? A child survived. Your nephew. Uh, yes. Let 
precious visit another Christmas. Yo ho, me boys! <laughs> no more work tonight, Christmas Eve! Shut her up, shut her up! <laughs> Ebenezer Dick, it's Christmas, chop chop! Clear away and make some room in the shop and let's get this party started! <laughs> oh, Ebenezer! Oh, Mr. Fiswick! Mr. Fiswick alive again! <laughs> Your first employer and benefactor. He tried to help your father find peace before he died. Oh, and there's old Dick Wilkins. <laughs> I'm afraid my back isn't what it used to be, young Ebenezer. Ah, but Dick, you're in your prime. Come now, what you lack in horsepower you make up for in... efficiency. Mr. Fiswick should consider getting in another young apprentice like yourself. Instead of relying on a relic like me, sure, I'd be furnishing the doors before long. Ah, uh, Mr. Fezzabig would do no such thing. He loves you like an uncle, and you are as much a part of Fezzabig's funeral home as himself. Look, why don't you go fetch the candles, and I'll finish off the donkey work. Furniture. You are a much better judge than I as to how to make everyone comfortable. Ah, but you have to use your imagination and not have everything looking like a tidy accounting sheet. For example. <laughs> how does this feel? Everything in a tidy row? <laughs> well. Indeed. Now, let us try an alternative arrangement. You take that one there and move it right here. Now, isn't that much better? Doesn't it invite confidence and make for a more sociable aspect? <laughs> it is the more sociable of aspects. <laughs> Dearest Belle, as ever, you know what to do. May I always bow to your perfect wisdom. <laughs> So 
So, a toast. A toast to young Ebenezer here tonight, who I declare, through his dedication and honest work, has well grown past his apprentice situation. And I herewith invite to join, as junior partner, the humble company of Feswick Funeral Home. Funerals to suit all classes. Uh, yes, and pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a partner in the making, no doubt, eh? What say you do? <laughs> and I suppose I'd better keep an eye to my own position. <laughs> one and all, and without any more ado, will you please raise your glasses to young Ebenezer Scrooge. Young yes. Ebenezer Scrooge! <laughs> oh, I fancy, Mr. F. There's more than one young person's heart not a little pleased to hear the news. Ding dong, bell is high, in heaven the bells are ringing, ding dong, bell is high. with his time and money. Profligate? <laughs> he wasn't what he spent. He, he, he had the power of those who worked for him, happy or unhappy. <laughs> had to make our work light or burdensome. <laughs> his power, then his kind words and, and looks and, and things so small and insignificant that it was impossible to add or count up. What's the matter? Uh, nothing in particular. Oh, something, I think. I was just thinking about my cap there. That's all. Your affection for Mr. Fezziwig didn't interfere with your ambition. I wanted more than he could possibly offer. I wanted more than, than, than for Belden, just a, a middling position in life. Whether she wanted it or not. And at what price? Price? I couldn't come any sooner. If I'd left, my competitor would have stepped into the breach. It matters little to you, very little. Another idol has displaced my poor dead father, and now even me. What idol has displaced you? A golden one. But Belle, it is not me. It is the way the world works. There is nothing on which the world is so hard as the poor. I know it. And yet, well, there is nothing that the world pretends to condemn so much as the pursuit of wealth. Look at what it allows to rule. You fear the world too much. All your other hopes that 
emerge into the hope of being rich beyond its power. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until your master passion profit engrosses you. Have I not? Well, what then? Huh? Even if I have grown so much wiser, well, what then? I've not changed towards you. Am I? Our engagement is an old one. It was made when we had enough and were content with what we had, so long as we had each other. But you have grown restless and wanted more and more and lost sight of why and what it was all for. You are changed. When it was me, you were another man. No, I was a boy. You know in your heart that that is not what you were. In my heart, I am the same. That which promised happiness when we were one in heart can only bring misery now that we are two separate souls. How often and how keenly I have thought of it, I would not say. It is enough that I have thought of it. And so, I release you. Well, have, have I ever sought release? In words, no, never. Well, in what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in anything that made my love of any worth their value in your sight. If this had never been between us, tell me, would you seek me out and try to win me now? Ah, uh, no. If this had been today, tomorrow, yesterday, can I believe you would choose a dourless girl like me? You who now seems to weigh everything by what you might gain from it. No. And so, I release you. One Christmas, you gave me this locket as a token of all the promise you felt in your hearts then. I give it back to you, full of heart for the work, full of love for the man you once were. What? Well. You may regret this <coughs> for a very, very brief time. But you will dismiss the memory of gladly as another unprofitable dream from which you were relieved to awaken from. I truly hope you'll be happy in the life you have chosen. The lost spirit! Tell me and show me no more! Oh, why do you deny to talk to me? <coughs> I told you. These were but the shadows of things that have been and still are. Well, then let the past in the past! Do not blame me. I am only the messenger. You must unravel the message. Till tomorrow. At the next same hour, I am of the first of the three. And remember, Scrooge, do not forget. Do not forget.
Tis a strange old night to be Carly, eh? <laughs> when Alice Falker tried to get some rest. Uh, who are you and what you want from me? Were you not expecting me? Were you not told of my coming? <laughs> That's your first question. You, I did not expect. <laughs> I might have expected a, a baby or a rhinoceros or a, a, such a strange series of events in court last night. And to answer your second question, if you were the spirit whose coming was foretold, then, then yes, yes, I was expecting you. Uh, what name do you give yourself? I am the spirit of Christmas present. Do you not recognise me? I, 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 I don't believe we have been introduced. Oh, but we have met. And you've encountered a number of my brothers and sisters. But perhaps because you call us humbug, so often we have not been better acquainted. Well, if, if I had met you uh, in the broad daylight mm. or on the street or maybe over dinner, or, uh, I might have been more inclined to, to, to get to know you. But uh, you had, and if you hadn't brought one into my apartment uh, and disturbed my rest. <laughs> You have brothers and sisters? More than 1,800. Oh, well, uh, a great many to provide for. Huh? We each live but a short life within a year, for as long as the season of goodwill prevails. <laughs> and mercy, so for whoever's putting food <laughs> on the table. <laughs> Come with me, Scrooge. Profit from the short time we have together. Uh, Profit. Uh, now, there's a word I understand. Uh. But I venture to suggest that you don't say the word with the same intent, uh, nor do both of us, both of us uh, have much to discuss that would profit either of us. Uh. <laughs> can you offer me an alternative to accompany you tonight? Because if you can, I'd rather return back to my bed. You will sleep again in time, Scrooge. And in time, if you choose a different path, you may find a sleep of the kind you have not had in many years. But first, you must come with me. Very well. Let this get this torture off of it. This Christmas Eve, you left your office late, as usual, and, as is your habit, turned neither left nor right. You passed through a world <coughs> filled with both joy and pain. You not see any of it. Touched by room and from Let us walk your path there and observe this time how those crowds There's one of my clients. Yeah. She borrowed this sum of money a while ago, and she fell back on her payments. Now, Mrs. <coughs> you've had your a lot of time to pay. If you don't meet your loan repayments, Mr. Scrooge will have no alternative to take judgment against you. Do you know what I mean, Mrs.? It'll be the bailiffs that get the workhouse for you and your family. But, sir, please, you must give me more time. As I have explained, I have already repaid the principal sum and just cannot afford to pay any more at present. You see, my husband is ill and unable to work, and well, the interest on the loan has just grown beyond any income that I can muster. I can't even afford a doctor for my husband. Ah, come on, here. Let's move on. We've been here long enough. Go by my most reliable clock, sir. <laughs> It's now on drinking time. For I have a horse of me that will drain a reservoir. <laughs> I'll be going to even pawn. We can come back later when the business is completed. I have sold or pawned anything of value. Everything has gone. We are relying on the charity of our very good neighbour, who was very little herself, but bless her, she won't see us starve. Listen to her, Bill. You can't get blood out of a stone. Mr. Scrooge will deal with this in his usual way. It's not our business any longer. I'm truly sorry, Mrs. Mr. Scrooge refuses to entertain any delay on his own opinion. 
But, sir, please, can't you just take your time before you draw Mr. Scrooge's attention to my case? Surely he's such a very important man of business and so many other matters to attend to. He won't notice just one small loan, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Scrooge notices. <laughs> Mr. Scrooge notices everything when it comes to money, Mrs. Mr. Scrooge misses nothing when it comes to money. Mr. Scrooge won't let so much as a farthing that is due to him go unpaid. I'd wager that if it were a corpse rotten in a grave and still on Mr. Scrooge, he would have the grave to up just to find the death's works. Even if the value were in the fittings of the coffin itself. <laughs> Notice! Uh. But sir, can't you just please explain my family circumstances? It's Christmas Eve! What do you say, Bart? Will you wait till after Christmas to register this in the book? We can say no one's at home. Perhaps something will turn up in the interim to change someone's fortunes. But if the old skin flint finds out, you must own the blame. Or if my own family be looking after, I can't risk losing this job. I will own this. This business does not sit one of my shoulders at any time. Especially Christmas. We'll be back again tomorrow, Mrs. Hopefully when then something will turn up. Or there'll be no putting it off again. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you. You are a good man. A kind man. Merry Christmas to you and to your family. I always had my suspicions about that fella. That <laughs> he has a heart. That uh, he wasn't a suitable agent for my business. He has an honest heart. And despite the sorry errands on which you employ him, he can still find room for compassion and try to be of help within his limited power. He's in my employment uh, and he should be looking after my interests. <laughs> he can employ as much charity and compassion as he wants in his own time and with his own money. As long as he's, he's in my employment, his power is mine. Ah, yes. And for all your business, he has acted as an agent of your so-called power. <coughs> but Scrooge, do you not realise that the power you think you wield represents nothing but your enslavement? Enslavement? Yes, you are a willing slave to the belief that the only thing worth working towards is that of hard going and precious metal. That currency has no feelings and nurtures no feelings other than an insatiable hunger for more. Do you not realise that you've lost any power of real worth? That man's heart is still free. For while he works for you, he can still find room for charity and compassion. You have forgotten. Poppycock! I chose real power, and real power comes with hard currency. You serve, Scrooge. You serve the idol you have chosen. There is no choice in being compelled to fill your safe, whether it brings pain or hardship to others in doing so. You know the cost of everything, but the value of nothing. I, I, bear humbug! Come, let us pay a visit to someone from your past who chose a different life from the kind you value. I, it, it's been. But she has been unchanged by time. Belle's daughter Rose is her absolute likeness. But the same years that have passed for you have also passed for Belle. <coughs> what time is it, Mother? Not much later than it was the last time you asked me, sweetheart. But it feels like an age since the bell rang the hour, and he said he'd be home on the hour. And he will be home, as always. Your father has never been less than true to his word. No doubt, given it's Christmas Eve, there's more than the usual crowd to contend with. And all the errands you asked him to collect on his way home. Rose, your father will negotiate through the trance with his usual grace. But what if these have been in, there's been an accident? There have been so many accidents of late between the snow and the ice. Just yesterday, 
I heard of a young boy Hush. who ran across Hush. my bed. Enough of this world. Anybody home? Oh, thank the heavens. <coughs> Papa's here. Oh, Papa, you are late. Oh, I was so worried that you'd been run over by a carriage and our whole Christmas would be ruined. Well, not just your Christmas, for in truth, our whole life would have been ruined. And I don't oh, know what Rosebud. we would have done. Rosebud, I'm here, am I not? Yes. A little late, but here, am I not? Yes. What tortures you put yourself through with your wild imaginings, when you must have known nothing would stop me coming home to my two favourite people, especially on Christmas Eve. Now please, take this hat and scarf, and take these parcels into Mrs Miggs before she's compelled to abandon her kitchen kingdom and come in and scold me for not delivering the ham on time. You, you wouldn't have me under her run, would you? Especially on Christmas Eve. What? Rose. How good it is to be home. There's a kind of a mad excitement in the streets at this time of the year. I know it too well, and it, it seems to infect her rules and make her more extreme in her imaginings. Are you a man of her to go for himself, or she have a molly coddled within an inch of his life in case of him getting a cold or starving? She'd have him stuffed like a turkey ready for the table. Ah, <laughs> uh, but Ben, she's all hat, like yourself, and she'll settle down. She had better, as she will. It's hard to believe she'd be married in the spring. Where has the time gone? Uh, speaking of years passing, I saw an old friend of yours this afternoon. And who was it? I guess. <coughs> now, James, are you going to torture me too after the last hour I had to endure with our rose? Never. It was someone who you told me about when we first met. <coughs> someone for whom you had quite an attachment. I think he was your first love. Oh, thank heavens, he was not your last. You saw Ebenezer Scrooge? Yeah. Well, I passed by his window, and as it was still open when all around him was closed for the night, and a candle was lit, I couldn't help seeing him. He was alone and engrossed in his ledger writing. Uh, it was a sorry sight on Christmas Eve. I heard his partner died some years back, and now he's, he's quite alone in the world. I am sorry for him, poor Ebenezer. Poor man. <coughs> Do you know, James, I was sorry for myself back then. For what might have been and what Ebenezer and I might have shared together. But now today, when I think of what I have, you and our rules. to take me away from here. Is it hard to look upon this village, to see the family that you might have had, to think that you might have had a different life? Show me no more. Very well, Scrooge. We cannot recover what might have been, but let us discover what may be within our power to influence. <coughs> Chickens are in bed already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, how's my little man? Tell me, what adventures did you get up to today? Did you climb another mountain? I climbed two. One was covered in snow and a great bag shaped like goblin and gaggler. 
and the other had blue and green medals, and the flowers like the one in the park in summer. What a man you were! What an adventurer! All that time early walked the streets of this city. Is my Martha home? I don't think Martha's coming home. <laughs> no, I don't think Martha's coming this evening. Not coming! Not coming home for Christmas! Well, it'll be a sad and sorry affair if my Martha's not here, and not one of my chickens up to console me. Tim might not see the spring. I don't want to hear that kind of talk. Of course he'll get better. Our little man is the heart of a lion and the courage of a warrior. I know, I know, Bob. He's just like his father, but I'm afraid for all his darling heart and bravery, if his poor little body just can't withstand his <coughs> attacks. Have, have, have you asked Mr. Scrooge about the advance? If we only had a little bit extra, Martha would take him to my cousin in Wexford. Please. I'm afraid Mr. Scrooge will not entertain any advance or loan to any of his employees. He's afraid it will damage our personal relations. Poppycock! That old skinflint is reluctant to part with a single farthing without a guarantee of doubling it. And he knows he has you put to the pin in your collar as it is. And there's no hope of getting any profit from the loan. Look, love, Mr. Scrooge has his principles. Although I'm at a loss sometimes as to understand them, but he is a man of business. And at the end of the day, we have what we have because of Mr. Scrooge. We have what we have because of your hard work <coughs> and Martha's working around the clock. And you, making it magically stretched to look after us all. <sighs> hey, spirit, tell me, does the boy live? I see an empty place beside the fire and a vacant seat at the table. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my kind will find him here. What then? If he is likely to die, hadn't he do so and decrease the surplus population? Well, I did not mean! I did not know! You did not mean? You did not know and who are you? Is your worth greater? because you hold so many within your debt. Do you decide who shall live and who shall die? It may be that you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. You are like an insect on a leaf pronouncing it. I do not pronounce. It is the world that pronounces. You make the world what it is. God makes the world. And I'm merely walking in the order that he has created. Man creates this cruel order of ignorance and want, and man maintains it. You maintain it. Come, let us pay one more visit before I leave you. I grow older as the minutes pass. <laughs> Cannot be so bad. <laughs> On the contrary, Dick, 
fresh and have answered yes to my guess of bear. <laughs> well, now he has given us plenty of merriment tonight. And I'm sure despite all his bad humbugging of Christmas and good company, I think we'll be ungrateful not to drink to his health. Fred, you're a wonder. I cannot believe you all give up on that disagreeable uncle of yours. He's denied every invitation you've offered him, even for Christmas dinner. He's never lifted a finger to help you his own nephew, or anyone else in life for that matter. Indeed, while I've yet to meet him, I'm not sure I'd wish to entertain anyone who's so completely absorbed in his own business. Now, now, Alice, there is no one in this world beyond redemption. And, and no one suffers more from his own rejection than my uncle. We have each other. He is nobody. And I am, and I am determined for my mother's sake. Though I never really knew her, but I will not give up on Uncle Ebenezer. Well, Fred, for your sake, I'll raise a glass to him. That's my Alice. So let us, let us raise our glasses and wish a happy Christmas and a happy New Year to the old man, whatever he may be. To Uncle Ebenezer! To Uncle Ebenezer! Generous hearted young man, your sister's son. My sister was ever so. She lives on through him, don't you see? Her spirit still lives and breathes in him. Her spirit? Ah, but my time is nearly done. Her spirit's life so short. My life in this world is very brief. It ends tonight at midnight. Tonight? Time must come and I must leave you. Soon you will meet another of my kind who will show you what I could not and cannot bear to look upon, even if it was granted me. Be prepared, Scrooge, and learn, if you can, what might or will be. The choice is yours. <laughs>